Hi, my name is Andy Naranjo. I am the section director for the Ridge of Pavements and Concrete Materials section within MTD. I'm going to go over the 2024 spec changes for item 360 concrete pavement and item 361 full depth repair of concrete pavement. Starting off with item 360 concrete pavements, one of the first changes we made was the removal of flexural strength testing requirements. Uh, this is a rarely used test. Only one district in the state was actually using it. Uh, and therefore we have removed it and all testing for concrete pavement will be by compressive strength testing. In addition, we created a DMS 7325 to control dial bars for concrete pavements. We will no longer utilize item 440 for dial bars and we'll utilize item or this DMS 7325 to cover all dial bars for concrete pavements. We also removed the alternative reinforcing materials. A lot of this was tied to the dial bars. The new DMS will now cover all the alternative dial bar types of materials used and uh, for approval. Additional change is the allowance of the anchor pins to remain in the final pavement. Uh, this allowance has been guidance in the pavement manual for quite some time. We have now taken that guidance and put it in the specification to allow anchor pins to remain in place in the final pavement. Due to a uh, FHWA stewardship review, uh, we removed all job control testing done by the contractor and TxDOT will perform all acceptance testing in concrete pavement. Uh, the FHWA did not agree with the way TxDOT was performing split sample verification. Therefore, the options were to go to a statistical analysis similar to what a design build project does or for TxDOT to perform all concrete pavement acceptance testing. A decision was made for TxDOT to perform all that testing uh, to stay away from more of the statistical analysis uh, criteria. We also added testing of the epoxy grouted longitudinal steel bars at transverse construction joints. The requirement will now be that all these bars that are epoxy grouted will be tested uh, to ensure that the operation can withstand the static load requirement in item 360. We also add a requirement for repairing honeycomb areas. This generally happens in foreign pavement where the consolidation of, with the vibrators did not get close enough to the forms, leaving honeycombed areas. These areas upon form removal will have to be chipped out and investigated down to sound concrete and either repaired or placed with the adjacent lane pavement. Curbs are now completely covered by item 529. There would no longer be any bid codes for item for curbs in item 360. Long tool timing will now be the default in the 2024 specifications. Currently, the default is at the contractor options, whether it's transverse or long tunnel, uh, depending on the equipment he has. But moving to the 2024 specification, long tool timing will now be the default. The engineer will also have the ability to evaluate uncontrolled cracking. Generally, uncontrolled cracking happens when you either have shallow saw cutting or late saw cutting. Uh, the end, uh, especially in CRC payments, some of the uncontrolled cracking uh, does not have reinforcing steel to handle that cracking. Therefore, we'll need to investigate uh, why it cracked and what is the proper repair strategy for that uncontrolled cracking. In addition, the engineer will check saw cut depths uh, per the new TEX 423 test procedure, part three. <clears throat> uh, as shown in the picture, here's an example of a concrete pavement where a uh, 12 inch deep concrete pavement should have had a four inch deep saw cut. Uh, it only has about a two and a half inch deep saw cut. This resulted in a long tunnel crack uh, elsewhere in the pavement and not at the uh, contraction saw cut joint. Uh, therefore, we will now be uh, verifying saw cut depth every 500 feet. Uh, right after the saw cut or before the ceiling operations, uh, whichever is the earliest. We also clarified opening and trap requirements. We tried to make this uh, section a little more concise and a little cleaner, so that way it's better easily understood. One of the major changes we did make in item 360 was the thickness pay adjustment revisions. We have now broken it up into two categories, pavements that are less than 11 inches and pavements that are greater or equal to 11 inches. The thinner sections, less than 11 inches, uh, we will have stricter pay reduction starting um, at about a half inch. Uh, and then 
for the thicker payments, we will have again the pay reduction starting at a half inch, but the pay reduction will be less because uh, we could handle slightly thinner payments when you actually have a thicker section. The next item will be item 360 full depth concrete pavement, full depth repair of concrete pavement. Uh, the first change is a title change. We have removed the half depth pavement uh, repair to item 720. So that is an additional change. So all the language for half depth repairs is now located in item 720. Because of the issues we have with uh, epoxy grouting uh, anchors, we are now requiring the contractor to provide an estimate of what number of epoxy cartridges he would need for each repair location. This will provide TxDOT a better um, estimate if the con contractor is utilizing the right amount of epoxy in each hole. The picture shown uh, there on the screen is an operation, is a repair operation where the contractor was not utilizing an adequate amount of epoxy. Uh, where he was should have been using uh, multiple number of cartridges for uh, the, the given repair. Uh, he was using quite uh, uh, a very little amount of pox for each hole, resulting in uh, inadequate anchoring of those rebars. We also clarify that new base is not needed. Um, once the slab is pulled, generally the base layer uh, or hot mix layer will come up with a slab. Uh, it is not necessary to bring in new space material and recompact it in the hole before filling with concrete. Uh, the clarification is that if the base material is uh, removed, uh, to go ahead and remove all loose material uh, and then fill up the hole with uh, concrete and not bring any base material back in. We did add a uh, reference to the use of concrete maturity method for evaluating opening to strength. Um, that is an acceptable method for concrete pavement repair. And since we are now requiring the hole to completely be filled with concrete and no new base uh, material be added back in, we are changing the measurement to from square yards to cubic yards. Uh, so that way uh, we get an accurate estimate of what the contractor is using in terms of filling that hole back up with concrete. And that's all I have.